Hi everyone, and welcome to our flip video around James Clark Maxwell. In this video, we'll be covering from the syllabus, investigating Maxwell's contribution to the classical theory of electromagnetism, including unification of electricity and magnetism, prediction of electromagnetic waves, prediction of velocity, and describe the production and propagation of electromagnetic waves and relate these processes qualitatively to the predictions made by Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. To get the most out of this video, you need to be familiar with earlier content such as wave behavior, including the properties of waves and transverse waves, electric fields, magnetic fields, and electromagnetic induction, including Faraday's and Lenz's laws. So James Clark Maxwell, before Maxwell, electricity and magnetism were considered separate. There were lots of different laws around there, like say Faraday's law, but they were considered to be separate phenomena. What he showed by bringing what's called field theory into play was they were actually part of the same phenomenon. Okay, and he created a unified theory of electromagnetism. And from an original set of about 20 equations, he actually synthesized down to four equations. And from these four equations, the existence of electromagnetic waves, that's waves with oscillating electric fields and magnetic fields existed, and that they traveled at the speed of light. They could be created by oscillating electric charges. So here are Maxwell's equations. Now you do not need to know these equations. You do not need to know the, the mathematics here, but you will actually be familiar with certain aspects of these equations. So the first equation basically says that electric charges create electric fields, which we already know. You can have a point charge, okay, let's say like an electron, and that can be surrounded by a radial electric field. Okay, so this is our electric field strength, and we're talking, what this equation brings into play actually is this constant here, which is the permittivity of free space, which describes how electric fields exist within our universe. The second equation, um, refers to magnetic fields and actually in fact says that magnetic fields have to exi exist with magnetic field lines in closed loops. So going from north all the way around to south. And more to the point, you could never have a magnetic monopole. You couldn't have just the north or just the south. But you have to have the dipole with the field lines going from north to south. That is unlike with electric fields, which as we know, you can have a single positive charge or a single negative charge surrounded by a field. The third law, which is basically Faraday's law, shows us that if we have a rate of change of magnetic fields or rate of change of flux, we create an electric field. So those of you familiar with calculus, you'll see this is a rate of change of magnetic field strength, okay? And then we've got the electric field strength here. The fourth equation, this actually shows that if we have a rate of change of electric fields, changing electric fields, and also the idea of electric currents, that we actually create a magnetic field. Now we already know that electric currents are surrounded by magnetic fields. And this encapsulates it. But more to the point, rather than treating them as separate entities, it brings them all together, as we shall demonstrate further. Now, I have a couple of beautiful quotes here uh, from Maxwell's written correspondence with his friends and family and colleagues, which actually describe his observations and his interpretation of what they knew at the time. So we can scarcely avoid the inference that light consists in the transverse undulations of the same medium, which is the course of a cause of electric and magnetic phenomena. So it's beautiful language here. We've got the idea of 
undulations. So we're talking about transverse vibrations, transverse waves. And that light is made of these transverse undulations of electric and magnetic fields. Now, just as a, an aside, he actually mentions the idea of a medium. And back then, many people thought that light required a medium to, to propagate through the same way, say, sound waves need some matter to actually vibrate through. We now know that light can travel through a vacuum, but at the time, we didn't know that. But Max was predicting that light was made by these oscillations of electric and magnetic fields. And also, this velocity is so nearly that of light that it seems we have strong reason to conclude that light itself, including radiant heat and other radiations, if any, is an electromagnetic disturbance in the form of waves. So as we'll show shortly, Maxwell predicted that the speed of electromagnetic waves was the speed of light. Or more to the point, he calculated their speeds and he found that the speed was almost identical to the speed of light that had already been measured. So he was therefore inferring that, or interpreting this data that light itself is actually made of electromagnetic waves. And also, that infrared, and they didn't have that term then, but the idea that heat that's radiating out, radiant heat, was another form of light, an invisible form of light, of electromagnetic waves traveling at the speed of light. And he's also predicting the existence of other electromagnetic waves, other electromagnetic radiation of different frequencies. And so we have this model of electromagnetic waves. So we have oscillating electric fields and oscillating magnetic fields that are perpendicular to each other and propagate in a perpendicular direction to them both. But they are what we call perfectly in phase with each other and that they travel at the speed of light. And these can be created by oscillating electric charges, by oscillating charged particles. And so Maxwell determined the speed of light by solving his equations. And those constants of the universe, they are literally constants of our universe, fundamental constants of the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space actually determine the speed of light. So the speed of light is in fact one over the square root of mu zero epsilon zero. Now that's not explicitly an equation that you need to know, but it's a nice way of demonstrating how Maxwell's equations predicted the speed of light, the speed of electromagnetic radiation. And you should be familiar with this value, albeit perhaps not to so many significant figures. And if I just move out of the way of my background, you will actually see a different way that these are um, presented, whereby rather than one over c squared in the fourth equation, we actually have the expression mu zero epsilon zero. Because if you have one over c squared, squaring it gets rid of this square root, and then it moves mu zero epsilon zero into the numerator. So that's a point of interest. You don't need to know that, but it encapsulates this for you. And so as mentioned, if we accelerate charges, if we just move charges, particularly if we oscillate them, so they must be accelerating, we're gonna produce electromagnetic waves. And I recommend you go to this FET simulation in your own time to actually have a look at how moving an electric charge will cause electromagnetic waves uh, that will actually radiate out. And similarly, in this FET simulation, if we have an antenna, let's say like a radio antenna, okay, the way an antenna works is electric charges, electrons in this conductor are caused to oscillate, okay, by the radio circuit in the radio station. Now they're caused to oscillate now 
by oscillating that she caused the ele an electric fields to oscillate. And in fact, the magnetic fields oscillate perpendicular. We can only see in the simulation the electric fields. And this electric field propagates. Okay, so the oscillations in the electric field actually propagates, traveling at the speed of light. And that can be picked up by a receiver. And what's actually happening is an EMF is being induced in this receiver. And the charges are made to move within the receiver. And that can be then converted into information um, such as music or the spoken words. Okay. Um, for those listening into that radio station. But this is a nice demonstration of what Maxwell predicted. By moving electric charges, we are creating disturbances in our electric fields, which propagates at the speed of light. And then those, that oscillating electric field and magnetic field will induce an EMF in a receiver and cause charges to move at the other end. And the final part of this story for yourselves, and this isn't explicit in this new syllabus, but it is explicit in the old syllabus. And many of us think that you may well be asked um, to at least interpret information about it, but it is kind of implicit around the predictions of Maxwell's equations. But a gentleman, Heinrich Hertz, he was one of the first people to actually prove some of uh, Maxwell's predictions. And he did this around radio waves. So Maxwell's equations predicted that there could be other frequencies of electromagnetic waves, invisible electromagnetic waves outside the visible spectrum. And so what he did was he actually set up um, a rapidly oscillating electric field by using something like an induction coil like you might have in school it's made lots of sparks. Okay, so it's an electric field essentially turning on and off, on and off all the time. And he was actually able to perform some experiment. He was, what he was able to do then, pardon me, was he was able to make these sparks. He didn't know it at the time, but uh, theorized that electromagnetic waves are being emitted. And then to actually show they're being emitted, he had to actually receive them. Now, he produced that with another coil that didn't have its own power supply. And the sparks here would cause corresponding sparks here. He then performed a variety of experiments that demonstrated the speed of whatever travels between here and here was the speed of light. And he was also able to find other wave properties of whatever traveled in between and that these were backed up by Maxwell's equations. And so he's proven the existence of some new electromagnetic waves, um, what we now know as radio waves. So you've got the spark at the receiver. So the key takeaways from this video. So, uh, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism involved four equations. You don't need to know them, okay? But you, it's good to know the backgrounds qualitatively around them. And that these unified electricity and magnetism, they predict the existence of electromagnetic waves. They predict that light was an electromagnetic wave. And they predicted that electromagnetic waves propagate at the speed of light. Also, that electromagnetic waves can be created by oscillating charges and that Hertz verified the prediction of electromagnetic waves of other frequencies by creating, detecting, and measuring radio waves. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.